Hi, my name is Andrew Gerber. I'm the associate pastor at Lexington Community Church in Lexington, Illinois. And I'd like to take a few moments and discuss what the Bible says about work. Specifically, what the Bible says about working your land. I remember several years ago when I was doing some work for a man who owned a very large home. And as I got done and I was cleaning up and putting my tools in my vehicle, I noticed the man standing outside. Just He was looking at this large home that he owned. And it just so happened that in another part of the country, a natural disaster was destroying homes. And, and as the man looked at this large home that he owned, he said to me, isn't it crazy that all of this could be taken away or destroyed just like that? And it struck me that in that moment, this man who had accumulated so much wealth, this man who owned this large home, he was coming to the realization that all that he owned could give him no guarantee of lasting comfort or lasting security. All that he had worked for was proving to be empty when it came to lasting comfort or lasting security. Now, it's important for us to know that work itself is a good thing. In Genesis 2, verse 15, we read that God took man at whom he had created and placed him in the garden to work it and to keep it. God's design for his created beings, his created human beings, is for us to work. But God's purpose is not for us to work so that we would accumulate some earthly uh, wealth for our own glory or for our own pleasure. God's design for us is for us to work as a means of worshiping him and enjoying him as he sustains us and provides for us and blesses us through the work that he gives us to do. However, when Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the land so that instead of being a beautiful blessing, work became a hard toil and man had to work by the sweat of his brow. And on top of that, man became inward focused. Work after the fall remained as part of God's design, but it was twisted. Now it became a means of man gaining glory for himself rather than a means of man worshiping and enjoying God. And that's the contrast that we see in Proverbs 28, 19. The first half of Proverbs 28, 19 says, whoever works his land will have plenty of bread. And what we see happening here is a man who has embraced God's design to uh, take part in honest labor right where God has placed him, to take part in honest work, trusting God to provide for him, to sustain him, and to bless him through the work that God has given him to do. Here is a man who is trusting God and enjoying God as he works. On the other hand, we have the man described in the second half of the verse that says, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. So here we have a man who has, who has abandoned God's design for work, who is no longer seeing work as a means of worshiping and enjoying God, but instead is using work as a means to try to accumulate things for himself. He has abandoned God's design and is trying to twist God's design of work to suit his own pleasures, his own worthless pursuits. And this is the man who will be filled with poverty. This is a picture of the man looking at his large home and coming to the realization that all of my work, all of my effort, all of my pursuits have been unable to provide me with any lasting comfort or security. The truth is, we all naturally abandon God's design for work. Rather than seeing work as an opportunity to worship and enjoy God as we go about our day, we take 
the idea of work and we twist it and work becomes a means for us to accumulate earthly things for ourselves. All too often, we find ourselves in that situation. And when we are using work as a means to accumulate something for ourselves that we think we need, that brings along the temptation to do this at the cost of others. When we view work as a means to gaining something that we think we need to experience some kind of comfort or some kind of security in this life, it becomes very easy then to do this at the cost of others, which is why God included in the Ten Commandments, the Eighth Commandment that says, do not steal. Now, we might hear the instruction, do not steal, and immediately think, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not stealing anything. I'm not robbing anyone. And this is where the Westminster Larger and Shorter Catechism and the Heidelberg Catechism uh, become very helpful because in question and answer form, these catechisms, they, they work to expand our understanding of what Scripture means when it says, do not steal, so that we see that it's more This command in Scripture is more than simply going and taking something blatantly from someone else. But there is more to this command. This command has to do with with helping your neighbor out and, and not robbing your neighbor in all kinds of ways. And so these catechisms help us expand our understanding of what it means to not steal, among many other things. The catechisms are an invaluable resource when it comes to expanding our understanding of Scripture as a whole. And this is very important. It's important for us to use resources like the Westminster Larger and Shorter Catechism and the Heidelberg Catechism to expand our understanding of Scripture because the more that we know about God and what He has revealed to us in His Word, the more we will understand about who we are as God's people and the freedom that he has given us. For example, falling into the empty pursuits of of chasing the accumulation of wealth, falling into that cycle of constantly trying to use work as a means to gain things for ourselves rather than seeing work as a means of worshiping God. Falling into that cycle is bondage and is actually part of the curse. And it's exactly what Christ died to set us free from. And the catechisms help us understand that, that that Christ died to save us from those empty pursuits. Christ died to save us from that bondage, from that curse. And Christ died to deliver us into worship of God, where we can once again embrace work as it was designed to be, to embrace work as a means of worshiping and enjoying God the way that he designed us to do. The catechisms help us understand what it means to work our land in a way that worships God and embraces his design while helping us steer clear of the bondage of stealing and trying to accumulate wealth at the cost of others.